Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu, and I am happy to welcome you today to the first official and real seasonal Tiabu treasure hunt. What we're going to do is I am going to watch every episode one of every new show airing this season, barring things that are like carryovers from the last season or season twos or continuations, stuff like that, because I haven't probably seen the first portion of that. Um... I'm going to watch them all. I'm going to watch every episode one. I did this last season, but right in the middle of doing it, my channel got shut down. And so I had like videos over here and videos over there. And by the time I got the channel back and thought maybe I should do something with this, I had this like grand plan, uh, which was really over ambitious at the point at that point to do like a reaction for every single show that came out uh, every episode one and then to do a big compiled video at the end where I put this out and it's like one video that you could watch to get a short blurb on every show that's airing the season and my my thoughts on it with like timestamps for everything. I ended up not doing that. I ended up just releasing the videos that I did record um, to my patrons because some of them wanted them uh, just to inform whether they were going to watch some of these shows during the season. But this season for summer 2019, I'm going to go. I'm going to go hard, and I'm going to put these out um, public for for everybody um, from the get go. So there will be reactions coming out on the daily for shows as they air, um, and I will only commit to doing episode one of any of these. Uh, and even in the reactions and reviews and stuff, I might say at the end like, "Oh, I could totally watch more of this," but we don't know if that's going to be the case because there are like 30 shows to get through and. I've only got so much time and so much to schedule. Um, certainly a couple of things from this this excursion will end up being treasure, and we will put them into the slots where they belong. But uh, the general purpose is going to be, well, it, it's, it's twofold, sort of. There's a purpose for you, which is like, I would like to provide a service to the anime watching populace. If they, if they like the way I think about anime and the way that I evaluate shows, then perhaps it could be useful for me to go through them and like compile as concisely as I can my thoughts on those shows. Um, and then also as an anime viewer and reviewer to an extent, um, I'd like to have an idea of where the industry is and what's generally coming out all over the place because um, that gives me a, a better better like background, a better foundation uh, within which to place shows that I like and figure out where I like them and where they fit into the the zeitgeist. Um, yeah, so we're starting off with a show that actually aired yesterday, and I would have done it yesterday, but I took yesterday off uh, to do some cleanup around the house and just to rest a little bit because this next week of new shows airing is going to be kind of hell for me, um, but, you know, in a worthwhile way that I, I did this to me. It's fine. It's totally, it's all good. And the first, the first show aired yesterday. It is uh, Katsute Kami Data Kenmonotachi E, or To the Abandoned Sacred Beasts. I probably pronounced that wrong, sorry. Um, this is a MAPPA show. I have liked most of MAPPA's recent shows. Uh, the director is Jun Shishido, who has not directed a lot of MAPPA shows, but he, he did direct uh, Hajime no Ippo New Challenger and Rising, neither of which I've seen. Um, he was also an episode director for one episode of Banana Fish, which I watched a little while ago, and three episodes of Death Parade. So, really, I have no bearing on, on who this guy is or any stylistic stuff. No clue. The music is by Yoshihiro Ike, who also provided the, the music for Kuroko no Basuke, Dead Leaves, which is rather notable, uh, Dororo, rather recently, Ergo Proxy, and Tiger and Bunny. Of course, not the OP and ED for Dororo, but the the soundtrack music yeah yeah um but there's some there's some some banging tracks on the tiger and bunny uh uh ost the dead leaves ost is is nuts and doro has some some cool stuff i don't really remember kuroko no uh ost very well nor do i remember ergo proxy's ost very well but that's a, a rather wide range and he's got a lot of credits other than that, I can't find anything anything else really about this show. Uh, there are some voice actors and some stuff, and it seems to be, it kind of the 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 promo art kind of reminds me of Fairy Gone from last season. It seems to be this sort of semi Victorian era ish, steampunky ish sort of maybe kind of thing with like monsters. Um, 
seemingly monsters that are used for fighting. But then there's this like Dracula guy in the background who looks uh, like me. <laughs> no, but uh, there's this like Dracula vampire looking dude in the background who looks all evil and stuff. I don't know what we're going to get here. Uh, we, we, we could be looking at like terrible CG monsters and bad acting. But we could also be looking at a, a totally passable, watchable, action-y, supernaturally show, which would be cool. So there's only one way to find out. Let's do it. I've got, uh, what, what should we call this show? Because I'm not going to call it Katsute Kami Data Kimono Tachi E. Uh, Kamitachi? Kamitachi. We good with Kamitachi? Everybody, everybody out there good with Kamitachi? Is there a better one? Kat, Katste Tachi? No. I like Kamitachi. I think that's good. We're gonna go with that. Kamitachi, episode one. I've got it up. It's ready. There will be multiple versions of this reaction video. You can find picture in picture versions with the video up there in the description down there. Timer based version will be on YouTube. It'll have a beep beep timer at the beginning and discussion at the end. Um, and then I'll draw on that discussion portion to like cut clips out of it to put into the big compilation video at the end. Cool. Um, discussion at the end, beep beep timer at the beginning, beep beep timer goes here. There we go. I just got 30 seconds in and there was like no visual. It was all black and I was wondering what was going on. It broke. So I've, I've already seen subtitles for like 30 seconds. We got this new ore. There's a split north and south. Shit gets crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's actually animated. Those aren't CG soldiers. I'm surprised. So this is like Civil War era combat. American Civil War era. Cannons, grape shot, art artillery, muskets. Not muskets, but uh, single shot, reload rifle. Yeah, yeah. Flintlocks? Those were CG in that that wide shot. This looks great. I mean, I don't love the color palette, but it's going for gritty war drama right now. Or like war footage. Yeah, wow. Ramrod and everything. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Horrors of war, dude. You do not want to be in those trenches. Holy shit. This is brutal. I like it. I haven't seen war like this portrayed in anime in a long time. Who are these? These are the Nazis? Oh, no. These, these are the, the shonen people. Freaking Akatsuki or something. Halt. Is he wearing gloves? He's wearing gloves. I was wondering why the skin of his hands is a different color. <laughs> okay. So they're the mage division something. And he's a grower. Oh my. This is all 2D. That's not a CG giant monster. Dude. Dude, dude, they all trans. Whoa, whoa, they animated unique transformations for all of them. Oh my god, wait, are those CG? Those are CG. Yo, the production, what? I don't think so, dude. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work. Ah. Uh... 
Spider? Yeah. Uh. 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 This music. Like we we don't have any characters, nothing. We just have combat. That's awesome. All right, now tell me tell me what led to this conflict or introduce me to one character who is caught up in it or or you're just going to continue the, the that. Okay, 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 okay. I assume that's what we just saw. Incarnates. Okay. Okay. All right, give me characters. Is it the leader guy? Is he the character? Probably. So instantly don't like the uh, the government very much. Or at least there's some implied corruption of military staff or lack of care for underlings. Hmm. That just got generic. Please. Please. Please stay interesting. Symptoms showed progression, so they've got an internal battle going on with their whatever it is. Okay, she's the doctor. Cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, okay. Homies since they were kids. Okay, and they all just hang out and do normally stuff. So these splotches of paint are... Are you able to? It's actually, it's almost got a Full Metal Alchemist vibe. I think that's what they're aiming at. Either you or Will is dead. One of the two of you who cares about the person in that photo, they're dead. Uh... Okay. 
Okay. Hard reminder that the war is still going. I don't think that's going to work, guys. So he still hasn't transformed. Oh, my. I'm going to assume that it's some kind of, uh, the animal. Whoa, that's a fighting walrus. I assume that the, the animal bits, uh, become more and more prevalent. They become unable to control them. That would be my guess. Wow. This all feels like it's it's setting up for some big rug pull. Surrender. I surrender. Hey, Snakey Boy. What are you doing? Snakey Boy, I think they surrendered. They're already... Okay, out of control. So they have to put one of their own down, huh? Still gonna go. Huh. Damn. Trying to kill himself? Succeeding. So there are stakes.
Mm. Mm. There are some interesting ways this could go. I'm going to hold off on, on talking about that. Let me write it down. Hold off on talking about that until we get to the end of the episode, and then I'll know if there's, like, if there's a stinger for the overall plot. Otherwise, it might be fun to conjecture a little bit. Okay. This does have a Full Metal Alchemist vibe. Sort of Ishval Invasion feel. Nice. Sir, yes, sir. Okay. Mm hmm? What purpose do the incarnates have in a world that's not at war? Is that what you really want? Yeah. Yeah. Your weapons. Oh. So those were magic bullets. I wonder what they do. It's a magic bullet. Had had weird colors on it. Okay. Okay. So what are you doing to him?
So your first. Damn. This went real dramatic. Okay. Okay, so what's going to go weird? Huh? Huh? Kane. Kane? Kane. 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 What are you doing? Oh, he's been holding this in for a while, huh? Oh, is he the one in the promo art who looks like Dracula? I think he is. Okay, you're still alive. <clears throat> oh. What happened to all the other incarnates? <clears throat> hmm. Kane Madhouse. There's a there's a protagonist name. And he's a villain, obviously. OPSED? Please. No, we'll just get it over. Okay. Going hunting, are we? Oh. Bingo. Oh, he's gone white. Oh, shit, it's got chameleon abilities. Bones, is that you? Okay. Okay. Ah, and we finally see his beastly form, which is a wolf. Big wolf. Cool. 27 seconds left. What have we got? Hello. Wait, is that... Is that her? So wait, 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 wait. His hair turns white? Yeah, his hair turns white. Okay. I don't know what that's about.
Okay, well, I I, I stopped a minute, a, a few seconds short, but that's the last, uh, that's the last line. She's not the girl, right? She's she's not the same same girl, is she? She's she looks quite a bit older. Yeah, they're they're definitely different. Okay, okay, okay. So as soon as we met Kane, I was like, wow, he's got red eyes. Also, his name is Kane. I wonder if he'll be an antagonist. <laughs> yep. Now the question is, of course, why is he the antagonist? Uh, let's talk about the show. The first and most notable thing about the show is the production quality and general willingness to animate big beastly creatures in 2D. I really appreciate that, and I think it's pretty great. Um, you probably heard me during the beginning of this, just like, okay, here's our exposition, 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 and then our first animated scene is this drumming. And it's, it's accurately animated to the drumming. At least they tried. It's got, like, cool motion blur and stuff on it. And then we see a row of soldiers that goes off into the distance, and they're all, they're all hand-drawn. These aren't, they, they don't, they don't fade into, like, CG duplicates or anything. They're all hand-drawn. Oh, well, that's an interesting thing. We zoom out to the wide shots, and of course, these are CG models. But then we come in close, and, and they're, they're all 2D. And then we have this shot. And wait, holy shit, those are all 2D. Oh my. Okay. Okay. We get this image on the top of the walls, and... and Wait, those are all 2D little figures drawn in here. Of course, it's a still frame, but... Hey, that's a thing. And then we get some motion blur on this, on this, uh, this saber. Everything's a little bit grainy. I think they've, they've applied a filter over it for this war section because it's meant to be grainy sort of war footage, right? Um, have that really gray, muddy, bleh aesthetic. So th these are all CG, but they're, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. They're just to give us the impression. And then 2D scenes of big groups of soldiers running all differently. And, and from different angles and stuff. There's a lot of effort here. Uh, all of this effects animation, I think, is 2D. And then there's this one cut here where these are all CG soldiers. Firing, reloading, just doing a loop. These are all CG soldiers, of course. But then these, this is fully 2D. And it's great. It looks great. It's also brutal. And, and that's something that I think the 2D helps to sell. Um, it helps to create a consistent world where the, the blood and the gore and the dead people and the, the, the amputated people who are crawling on the ground and the horrors of war. It's hor horrifying. I think they nailed it. It is legitimately horrifying. And then we get put into the emotional state of this, this person, uh, this random soldier who's just dealing, um, and overwhelmed. And then at this moment, they arrive. I... I would have liked a little bit more uh, build up to this or a little bit of like fanfare for it or something um, to give us some idea of how we're meant to feel about these these characters as they walk on. Because when we see them, my initial response is just curiosity. I have no idea which side these people are fighting on. Obviously, they're walking toward the castle that's being attacked or the fortress or whatever. So they're attacking that and they're helping the guy the soldier who we saw before but like is this a triumphant day is this what is this what how do i feel about this i don't know but they're weird they've got colored things on on them yeah that's a little bit of a weird moment where we see his hand but it's a glove i just didn't didn't notice that it was a glove and then we meet our main character and uh first we have our first transformation and it's awesome let's watch this so he, he grows he balloons up before his uh his jacket actually tears and then we close up on the hand for it to rip out of the uh of the place yeah becomes a big thing wow wow there's like artistry and work here it's amazing it looks really good and then then they like all do this and there's our setup for Ebby. <laughs> this moment where this guy in the middle JoJo poses for just a sec. 
<laughs> but this is this is awesome. There, it's like a a creative set of really interesting monstrosities that these people turn into, and then they just wipe battlefields with them. Oh, there's e even Chameleon Guy is set up there. I guess I was I was just like watching, and it was amazing. But there's one weakness to this whole sequence, and that is we have no real idea of what this battle is or why it's important uh, until later when we get the voiceover that's telling us that this is pretty much the first time that these new forces have been unleashed. Um, I think knowing that going in might have been more interesting because then we get to see the fear in the eyes of the enemy as they as they are suddenly set upon by this uh, otherworldly foe, right? Um, but we don't get that. We don't get actually, I don't think any humanization of the enemy. We just see them experience defeat. But there are a lot of really cool ideas, interesting um, animal-related, like chimera-related abilities here. Like the snake that turns people into gloop, and then they bloop. Or the spider lady who has control over things. Or the, 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 the lancer-like centaur. The giant wolfman. Also, all of this is all 2D animated, and it looks great! It really does. So then we get to Aftermath. Before science. Uh, we meet our MC, And he stands in front of a bunch of horrifying monsters. Triumphantly. Like a boss. Um, we've got set up that the government are kind of bleh. Because they're like, we lost a bunch of men. He's like, oh! <laughs> Disposable cannon fodder. No worry. So at this point, I thought the rug pull was going to be, you've been fighting for the, the wrong side the whole time. Something like that. Um, but no. Meet Elaine. I think her name is Elaine. Is her name Elaine? I think her name is Elaine. Anyway, Hank and Kay and Elaine. And romantic thing set up. Uh, all best friends. Three best friends. The fact that, that, that Kane isn't looking directly at the camera, um, by which I mean his body isn't facing the camera, uh, his eyes are, this gives him a, a feeling of side-eye, which makes us a little bit just like a, a touch of suspicion, because it's as though he's pointing his body elsewhere. Um, yeah. So I was expecting this whole thing with this guy being like, introduce me to your cute daughter. And he's like, I have a cute daughter. Um, I thought one of them was dead and gone. I thought one of them was actually going to be the first one to, to turn if that was going to be the thing. But no, it's Abby. Or Ebby. Ebby? Ebby. So we've got this, uh, everyone knows that he's interested in the doc. Lots of pressure put on him. I don't. I don't find this very funny. Um, I, if this was meant to be a, a genuinely comedic moment, I don't. Fi I didn't find it super, like, laugh out loud funny. Also, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this particular transition where we fade to black and then we open with a, with one of those. Not sure if I love that. And then it's just more battle. And then we we kind of, yeah, we we do this fight. And then there's this stuff, and then we have a battle montage as they're just like going around sweeping the war, because the war isn't the focus, right? We if we have to get past the war. There's some great set pieces here. I think this is a cool set piece uh, with the 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 ships that are designed after what was that ship named? The <sighs> armored steamship, ironclad warships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the USS Monitor or uh, the uh, the Japanese Kotetsu. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty neat, but uh, no match for giant octopi and other monsters. Then we get our Ebi, Ebi goes mad thing, which has been pretty well set up. Like there's a lot that they don't know about being an incarnate. 
Um, it's not me, it's something else. So the monster side of you is clearly doing that. And then he shoves his hand down his throat and turns it into snake hands so it grows and then... Ugh. Nasty. But in a good way. And this freaks out everybody. Of course it does. It's got a ripple effect. And she believes that she's somewhat uh, responsible to an extent. They go out and... Yep. They burn the body. And then it's he gives this speech about how... Uh, we will all swear an oath. If one of ours goes off the rails, we're going to be the ones who go and take them down. There's no way to bring them back, but we'll be the ones to take them down. And at this moment, I went, oh shit, Heart of Darkness, please. Because I just finished watching a, a really great documentary, which I highly recommend that any of you who are interested in filmmaking um, check out. Just because it's, it's really interesting. Um, a documentary called Hearts of Darkness, which is about Francis Ford Coppola... Uh, and, uh, the production and the, the horrors of production of Apocalypse Now. And the, the documentary is called Hearts of Darkness. And Francis's wife, um, brought a video camera along with them and shot documentary footage throughout the 200 some odd days of filming. But it, it's a really fantastic documentary and, and one that you should see because it's, it's rare that we have like on set uh, significant onset footage um, and candid, candid commentary uh, from people working on a big film like that. It's it's really interesting, at least to me. So check that out if you want to. But the reason that it interests me is because uh, Apocalypse Now, being based on Hearts of Darkness or Heart of Darkness, um, is a story about a group of soldiers who are uh, ordered to go and eliminate one of their own who has gone wild he, he's gone uh gone mad in the wilderness in in hard in uh, apocalypse now it's in vietnam but they're they're sent to go and track one of their own a soldier uh down because his his methods have become insane and he's like he's running his own like mini dictatorship in the vietnam jungle <laughs> Uh, so what I was thinking when, when we had this moment where they swear we'll bring down one of ours who goes, who goes crazy, right? Was, oh my God, we could have that. We could, we could have like a little, a little squad that's after the war going around dealing with, you know, trying to hunt down one super bad. That would be cool. But, uh, what we ended up with is something that's kind of similar to that. Instead, we've got a, uh, a man on a mission story reminiscent of uh, revenge thriller sort of but where he is single-handedly uh trying to uphold that oath it seems and hunting down all of the various ones that have gone wild and are are messing things up for other people in the nation they're threats right they're they're weapons they're human biological super weapons and they need to be taken down and one of their own is now going and trying to do that but of course his path will lead him to Cain uh and well his path is is informed by his questions which are why did you shoot her why did you do this and why did you leave me alive what what is your end game Cain what are you trying to do here um so that's interesting that's interesting the story is seemingly unique the setting is reasonable i'd like some more depth on it but it's it is a 12 episode show so maybe, maybe not i don't know if i if i would watch more of this there was a portion in the middle here uh especially with just the the conversations between between randos um and the war montage thing where I found myself kind of sighing a little bit, just like, meh, no, all right. But um, animation on the beasts is fantastic and 2D, and that's cool. Uh, story seems interesting. Characters don't have much depth to them yet, but we had to get them to the, the starting line, right? If the starting line is him in bed uh, two months after the war has ended, we need to get there. And we need to set up all these bits and pieces to get there. So that those can inform the rest of the journey of the show. 
but I'm intrigued. I might, I, I think I'll watch another one. I think I'll watch episode two. So my overall takeaway from this is two day animation looks great. Uh, story is intriguing and the, the world that's been built up is, is interesting. The, the, the characters have questions that need answering, uh, especially around Kane. Like, what are your motivations, dude? Why did you turn on a dime like that? Why have you been pretending to be this guy when you're actually secretly evil the whole time? What have you been up to? What, what's what's the goal here, Kane? But uh, all in all, an interesting show, and I would say worth watching episode two of to see where it heads from here. Okay. Well, that's going to be it for me. I've been Tiaboo. This has been... What did I call it? Ka Kats... No, Kami... Tachi. Kamitachi. Uh, this has been Kamitachi episode one. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Or more, or whatever. Um, or less. It doesn't really matter. Like, whatever. But, uh, yeah. This is a show. I think this is a great way to start off the season, honestly. Compared to a lot of the shows, the episode ones that I watched last season, this is great. Um, compared to this, I, I would be infinitely more... more pleased to watch more of this than to watch more of say fairy gone from last season because this looks good and is voice acted pretty well and the production is nice and it seems to know where it's going and have a, a plan to get there cool anyway that's gonna be it for me did you like this show are you gonna watch more of it let me know in the comments peace